starting with how you would choose the right school for you. So there are about 9,000 accredited academic institutions of higher learning in the United States. So if you're looking to do a bachelor's degree in computer science, or a master's degree in biotechnology, or a PhD in automotive engineering, or anything else, there's a degree for you out there, and there's a location for you to do it, and there are probably 20 or 30 or more locations for you to choose from. So some possible factors that you might be thinking about. Obviously, number one, hopefully, is the education you're going to receive while you're there. So here are some questions you might ask yourself. Does the school have academic programs or courses in which you're interested? Makes sense, right? If you want to do mechanical engineering, hopefully you're going to the school with a mechanical engineering program, and you're not just going to a school because your friends have told you it's a good place to go. Which is valuable also, but you want to consider what you're going to be studying. Don't just look at the program, look at the courses they have also. Look at the different subjects you'll study while you're in that course. Do they have different specializations? A lot of programs have a focus in one area. It might be different from other programs. There's a question up here, how does the school rank compared to other universities? When you look at rankings for universities in the US, you should know that there's no official ranking system. So there are lots of rankings. Any magazine you look at will give you a ranking. I could give you a ranking, but you want to look at what that's based on. So some rankings are based on job placements after people finish the program. Some rankings are based on student surveys of how satisfied they were with the program. Some rankings are based on the best food near that university. <laughs> so that's what I considered when I chose a school, but you might be a little smarter and think actually about what you're going to be studying. So what is the school's admission rate? What's their graduation rate? There's a lot of data out there to look at. The best place to get this information is on the website of the university itself. Student diversity. What percentage of the student population is international? That's something important to think about. There are some schools in the US that attract people from all over the US and from all over the world. Many schools like that. There are some schools in the US that are a little smaller and mostly attract people from nearby towns and cities. So, so as somebody coming in, that's something you want to think about if that matters to you. Do you want to be at a place where there are a lot of people from different parts of the world and from different backgrounds? Do you want to be at a university where there are other people from your same country, other people coming from India? Do you want to be at a place that has a religious affiliation? There are some schools in the US that have a religious affiliation. There are a lot of schools that don't. Okay, so you have all of those options. The location. The US, like India, is a large and diverse country in terms of geography and weather. So if you want to be somewhere that is hot and you can hang out on the beach after you go to class, you can find that in the US. If you want to be somewhere in the mountains where it's snowing, you can do that as well. Now, is there a relative or a friend that you want to be close to? We talk to a lot of students. We talk to thousands of students a day. A lot of times I hear I want to go to this school because my cousins live nearby or my mother lives nearby, my brother lives nearby. That makes a lot of sense. I wouldn't make your decision based entirely on that, just like I wouldn't make my decision based entirely on how good the food is there. But those are important factors. We understand people probably want to be near relatives. It's a good support system. Or if you have a friend that's nearby, that makes sense. So those are things to take into account. Another th is the school at a rural or an urban location. So you could go and study in the middle of New York City and be surrounded by 20 or 30 million people, kind of like Mumbai. Or you can go and you can study somewhere very different. You can study somewhere in a town of 700 people at a school of 500 students, it's going to be a very different feel. So that's something that you need to think about. Do you want to be in more of a, a village setting or a town setting, or do you want to be somewhere in a really large city? And what kind of weather can you expect? Snow, right? Facilities. So there are very large universities with lots of facilities. There are smaller universities that maybe have a building where all their programs happen, and there's everything in between. Some universities have 
lots of sports and gyms and parks and lakes. Some schools have beautiful libraries. You have to think about what's important to you. If you're going to do a hard science program, maybe you want to look at, look at what the laboratory facilities are at that university. If you're going to do a program in botany, maybe you want a school with an arboretum. Everybody has their own concerns. That's what makes it so fun and interesting. And so you want to think about what's important to you. So do you want to be in a city integrated university or one with its own campus? Do you want a university with gyms or fields? Do you want transportation provided by the university? Some schools have their own bus systems. Some schools, you just take advantage of the you know, resources that are around you, whether from that city or if you're living somewhere that's more rural, maybe you'll be taking a bike or maybe you're going to need to buy a car while you're there. What dining options does the university offer? How large is the library? All of these things are valid concerns. I might sound like a broken record, but again, the best place to get that information is from the universities itself. So from the university's website is a great place to go. The tuition. So once you've looked at the options, money is a good factor to consider. How much are you willing to spend on tuition? How much are you willing to spend on living costs? A lot of people that I talk to, when they think about how much it's going to cost to live and to study in the US, they think about that first line, the tuition. The tuition is a lot, but it's not everything. So if your school is going to cost $5,000 a semester, that's part of your expenses. But if you only have $5,000 to spend, you might not have any books or food or a place to live, so you might not have the best semester. So it's important to think about what else you're going to need to spend money on. So housing, whether it's living in university-provided housing, and that could be a dormitory or an apartment, whether you need to buy books, you might be able to get some loaned books from the library or some rented books or used books to save money on that. A lot of things are online these days, and so you can save money on that as well. Health insurance. So health insurance, some universities provide health insurance. Some universities provide health insurance that's subsidized, where you still have to pay part of it. Some places you have to buy your own health insurance. And living expenses, transportation, entertainment, etc. So if you make a budget where you can pay for your school, you can pay for a bus pass, and you can pay for your books, that's great. You still might, at one point, want to go to a movie on the weekend. So you might want to have a little money for that. So when you're making a budget, think about what's important to you. Think about what you like to do when you're not in class also. So you can try to summarize to yourself and think about how much money you're realistically going to need to have to go to school. Now the perfect school is different for everyone. There's no one perfect school out there. I know a few people came up to me today and asked me what the perfect school was for different programs. And I can't really answer the question because really it's got to be the perfect school for you. It needs to be the perfect fit. And so it's going to be an amalgamation of all of those different factors. So the important thing is to find a place that's right for you, that has a good balance of all of these factors. So if it's an urban school that you want, and if it's a large school that you want, and if it's in a warm environment, it's great, but that still only narrows down your list by about half. There are more factors to consider. There are a lot of universities in the US. There are a lot of good universities in the US. 